Hello, it's so good to see you again. I'm Barbara and together with Daniel I will start a historic sailing ship, Flying Coney. On a boat project there are all kinds of different jobs that need to be done and some of them are more fun than others. However, all of them need to be done at some point. And now the time has come to clean Flying Coney's bilge. Definitely one of the less enjoyable tasks. And by the look of it, all the previous owners felt the same and left it for a later time. However, a clean bilge is really safety relevant, as we will learn the hard way. So whenever we have a volunteer, what we try is to give him the insight and the options to do many different tasks aboard the boat because of course on the long run we've planned to have a traditional sailing rig and to teach the skills that are needed to sail this boat but we don't have a sailing rig at the moment and what we can do now is that we can teach the skills that are needed to maintain the boat and to give the opportunity to get into steel boat maintenance and to learn the skills that are needed for that. So we had Natalia over for a few days. What we did the first days was that we did the front of the wheelhouse, a little bit of woodworking, a little bit of varnishing and all the skills that are needed for that. But for the third day we had something very special prepared. Some Real shipwork, cleaning the bilge. So in our opinion, having a clean bilge is absolutely safety relevant on board of a boat or of a ship, because over time, everything that can end up in the bilge ends up in the bilge. So a lot of cable ties, uh, bolts, welding electrodes, grease, dirt, everything collects down there and things like that could easily clog up a bilge pump and if there's water coming in then you're in big troubles if the bilge pump's not working. So it was something we wanted to do for a very long time and this time we had some help with Natalia so we said it's the right moment to do it. Is it possible? Yeah, it's very soft. Okay, good. I guess there is one tip whenever you're on board of a ship, never be the smaller, because you will be the one who is sent to these jobs. Since we haven't hauled out Flying Coney for about two years, and the next travel lift or slipway is at least one day sailing away, we approached cleaning the bilge very, very careful. We only used uh, plastic shovels and plastic putty knives to scratch away the dirt from, from the hull itself. And we also did it uh, very gentle. Also, since you don't know uh, what collected up in the bilge, we think it's better to wear respirators than not wearing them. Better safe than sorry in this case. Flying Coney has a very, very deep bilge that has a capacity of several thousand liters of water and the good thing is it makes cleaning a little bit easier. But here is a small advice from my side, never be the smallest board of a ship because then you're the one fitting into the tightest spots on the ship. Like we had to squeeze in Barbara through the 
very strangely uh, run pipes. So there was just enough room for Barbara. No chance to stick me in there. How unlucky I am. And that was Bauer's job cleaning the bilge underneath of the engine, which worked out pretty fine. The good thing about having a lot of grease and a lot of oil in the bilge is that this grease and oil is really good for the steel itself. So the condition of the steel in the bilge is quite good. But last time when we hauled out, as you probably know, we found the corrosion damage and also we have welded a lot. It's always possible that we missed some spot underneath of the keel cooling or where the boat was laid on, on the wood. So it could have been that we missed one or two spots. So that was the reason why we really approached this project very carefully and only used gentle tools because we don't want to remove uh, needed steel that is in between us and the water so to have a leak that would have wouldn't be that good. So the way our bilge is constructed is that there are huge engine foundations on both sides of the bilge. And since it was a wooden boat, for whatever reason, uh, they're a lot beefier than what we would expect on a steel boat. And for whatever reason, uh, there are no holes or just very tiny limber holes cut into these engine foundations. And there is no good way of reaching the hull behind these limber holes and behind of the engine foundations. In most cases you do have some round cutouts where you can at least clean it or can, can tackle a problem that is there. In our case there are the tiny limber holes and that is that. So in case if there is something underneath there, underneath the engine foundations, we are in big troubles. It is a project for the future that we want to, to cut in access holes to these compartments. But uh, especially with these compartments, the big problem is that over time a lot of the dirt was laying in these compartments that we couldn't reach. So Barbara did her best to clean the bilge as good as possible. When she scraped off the dirt that was coming through this limber holes, it really seems like she has removed structural dirt. And also the bilge was quite dry for about six weeks. There was some water coming through this limber hole, which was a little bit of unusual in this case.
So that was the point where I got a little bit nervous, especially since we has, have squeezed Barbara in this compartment. I didn't want it to have a lot of water coming in there while Barbara was underneath of the engine. So that was the first big problem. And second, we've seen in the shipyard time that even a really tiny pinhole with just a little bit of scratching, just a little bit removing of a little bit of wood can end up in a huge hole. So it's absolutely possible that there was a hole that was just tight because of the grease and of the dirt that was kind of baked to the hole. Usually a leak starts very tiny with just a little bit of drips of water and over time it gets more and more and more and then you're in big troubles. And usually the first way of tackling a, a hole like that is to take some grease, some leak proving grease put it on a rack and put it on a board and just shutting it tight. But in this case, since this compartment isn't really accessible, that would have been no option. But we stayed quite calm and kept it, kept an, a close eye on the water that was coming in. Since it was really hard to tell where the water was coming from and there still was the small chance that the leak was right at the corner where the engine foundation started, we put some Leak Hero and Leak Sealing Grease right at the spot where the water was coming from. Vielleicht noch ein bisschen mehr. Wo? Keine Ahnung, aber ich glaube, das Kühl ist rinnt noch ein bisschen. Okay, dann passt. Dann kommen wir mal raus. Of course, finding water in the boat where it shouldn't be is always a stressful situation, but there are some possibilities why there is water. So the first one and uh, worst case scenario is that there really is a big leak hiding in the knees of the grease and that it was just held tight by some paint and by some, some dirt. A leak like that would get bigger and bigger and bigger. The, the water would wash away the dirt, it would get more and more. The second possibility is that there's just some rivet leaking or a plate seam leaking that's not uncommon on a riveted boat and over time these leaks they, they close itself and of course the third option is that there was some water pocket in the grease in the dirt that was shut off from the elements and still wet and when Barbara scraped off the surface of this water pocket it was just dripping through that's also a very um, possible reason for having a few drips of, of water but of course having water coming in to the boat is always kind of an emergency situation and since we are in fresh water we can't simply taste the water if it's salty or not so there is no real chance of checking if it's really coming from the outside or not. So the first thing that we did is we went to our favorite shipyard on Urk and we checked if they do have a, a space available for us if the water is getting more that is coming in having the opportunity of an emergency haul out and they had it. It really felt good to know that we could go to the shipyard if there would be more water coming in. However we decided to take some time to prepare Flying Coney for the journey and to get some more leak proofing materials before we start our journey to the shipyard. We organized and bought some leak proofing material. So we do have our leak proofing grease which is a grease that you can form and put over a potential hole or you can put it on a rack, push it with a board on top of the hole, which is a common way of dealing with leaks on steel boats. But we also bought some, some sea bunks. Usually they are meant to replace through hulls while the boat is in the water, but on a steel boat they also work. If a rivet pops out, then you do squeeze it in and the umbrella head opens up there. So that should work. We do have it in different sizes for, for rivet, for some, some medium-sized hole, or if worse comes to worst, we also have big 
big umbrella but of course you do have to get it through the hole and I don't think it's a good idea to drill the hole open and bigger just to be able to push it through but that one is meant to, to go through the hole and then you can somewhere attach the, the strap and pull it pull it shut. We also have some really old school material for a popped out rivet which can happen on a riveted chip which is this specially prepared bolt here and the special thing about this bolt is that there that it's tapered at the end and then there is a hole and the way how it works if a rivet pops out is that you take some floating material for example this key attachment device here and you attach a fishing line to this floating device and you just stick it through the hole that is there because there is no rivet anymore when the, this floating device floats up to the top of the water then you just collect it and you remove this the floating device and you attach the pole to the fishing line and from the inside you pull the bolt through the the hole and then you remove the fishing line again and you screw it tight with a nut and that's tight enough until you haul out the boat in the next shipyard. And of course we do have a lot of different bungs and cones and all of that. We do have a, a complete bag full of different sized ones that you just hammer in. Well there is also the hammer in there. It's a mallet hammer it in and then it should be watertight again. And that are the materials that we do have and of course it's always good if you can improvise something so we have also a lot of old wood also a uh, welder board that's working with our electricity so we do have plenty of options to dealing dealing with leaks. We also ordered and bought one of those petrol driven emergency bilge pumps or emergency pumps and they can move quite a lot of water in a short period of time. Of course they are noisy but better have them than not having them. So with all these devices of course you do have to think about how they work and how to use them in case of an emergency and especially with the pump it's really needed to not just buy it and store it somewhere on the boat in case you need it but you really need to try it out and in this case it wasn't that easy to get it running and in case if there's water coming in that's nothing I want to do in the situation and that's the reason why we tried it up beforehand and now it's working fine. Lately we have invested a lot in emergency equipment aboard Flying Coney and one item that we really wanted to have is a strong emergency pump. This one is a petrol driven pump with uh, three inch diameter hoses and the capacity of I think 60,000 liters per hour which is quite a lot and we hopefully will never need it but today is the day where we want to try it out. The problem is that the cord to get it started that isn't working properly and now it jumped over and it's just not a high quality pump but it's 120 instead of 1000 euros so since we don't we hope to don't need to use it often well we opted for the cheap route
after we figured out how the pump worked, it did a pretty good job. However, figuring out in what position all three switches needed to be was a bit tricky and the manual wasn't much help. But now it runs and in case we ever need it, we know how it works. So of course having these drips of water coming into the boat and dripping out of this limber hole wasn't something we wanted to have, but the spot where the boat was was probably the best one for any kind of emergencies and where it was really easy to deal with any sorts of problems. That was the reason why we didn't want it to go to the shipyard straight away and also we had the feeling that it was getting less and less, the water that was coming in there. But the most important thing is it left us with some sort of uncertainty. Have we really managed to to get in control of the electrolysis or was there still some sort of stray current on the hull? Have we really gotten all the, the spots that needed some, some welding, things like that? So uh, we made the decision that it's really necessary to haul the boat out in a very short time, not rush it, order all the emergency kit that I've just shown you, but not longer than a few weeks and then we do need to haul out Flying County. We inspected the leaking spot for several days and eventually it stopped dripping. So probably it was just a leaking rivet or some water trapped in the dirt. Anyway, just as Daniel said, for us it was a warning shot and we booked our next shipyard time. We prepared everything for the trip to the shipyard on Erg and then headed back through the inland waterways and the Eiselmeer. But that's a story for another time. Restoring an historic ship is quite an adventure and you never know what happens next. And that's why we are really thankful for the generous support of our lovely Patreons. Without you, this project, the videos and especially the upcoming shipyard time wouldn't be possible. So a huge thanks to all of you. And if you want to support this project too, then leave a like, a comment and subscribe to this channel. Or head over to Patreon. It does make a huge difference and we really appreciate it. And that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.